Rest in peace, old friend. There's nothing like a good coffee maker, especially when you grind your own and you want it quick. So, hello, new friend. <laughs> See you guys out in the shop. We're going to do a valve adjustment. Okay, gang, we're getting started on setting the valve lash on the 1973 Honda CB350 four-cylinder and there's a specific process that you have to go through to get it done. If you look right through this little inspection hole here you will see a static timing mark right there and then here you'll see a T and just out of view right down here you'll be able to look in there and see there will be a 1-4. That 1-4 lets you know that that is the timing mark for putting 1-4 number 1 and number 4 cylinders at top dead center. So after you get it to that mark you want to have all of your tappet caps off so that you can check them. And the way you check them is real easy. You just reach up, check and see if the valves wiggle, if the tap, if the uh, rocker arms wiggle a little bit. They'll either wiggle on number one or number four cylinder. Whichever one they wiggle on is the cylinder that you will be setting the valves on. In this case, right now, set like it is with the T lined up perfectly with the static timing mark has number four cylinder at top dead center so I'll set those valves first intake exhaust valve is set to 0 0.002 thousandths or 0 0.05 millimeters exhaust is set to 0 0.003 thousandths or 0 0.08 millimeters exhaust is on the front side where your tailpipes are where your exhaust pipes are and the uh, intake is on the carb side just to simplify it so that I'm sure that I'm covering all bases because I have seen zero videos on setting the timing on these CB 354s, 404s and 504s. Procedure is all the same. Okay, So after you get cylinder, whichever cylinder has the loose rocker arms that's the one that is on the compression stroke and ready to fire. You'll set those valves quite simply by using a little 8 millimeter wrench to loose or 9 millimeter wrench rather to loosen the jam nut and then it's a little square top um, tap it if that's what you want to what, what would you call it with an overhead cam the adjuster is just a real small square so I'm going to use a very tiny pair of smooth jaw channel locks to set them. Um, after you get done setting your valves on your number one cylinder or excuse me in this case your number four cylinder you want to rotate the engine 360 degrees so quite simply you will just run it around clockwise one full revolution using your kickstart. To make it easier on me, I have taken the spark plugs out so it'll rotate easy enough. And then I have a 22 millimeter wrench that I'm using here just to fine tune, very gently fine tuning and getting my marks exactly where they need to be in order to set my valves. So after you rotate it that 360 degrees, you will then set your number one cylinder. Now to set numbers two and three cylinders you will rotate your crank around again until you will see the T2-3 mark and then it's a lather rinse repeat on setting the valves on two and three so that you know which cylinder is which number four is on the right number one is on the left as you're sitting on the bike so you're looking at one 
two, three, and four. Right now I am setting number four. I'll rotate that 360 degrees, align my mark to my T mark with my 1.4 on it, making sure that 1.4 is down there, to my static mark on the case, and I will then set cylinder number one. Then I will rotate it around to the T2.2-3. And like I said, lather, rinse, repeat. And I'll repeat your measurements again. Intake, now this is on the CB350 and on the CB500 and 550 fours. The 400 fours, I'm not positive on. My book does not state. But it is the same on all three engine types. 350, 500, and 550 four cylinders. 0 0.002 on the intake, 0 0.003 on the exhaust. That would be 0 0.05 millimeters and 0.8 millimeter, 0 0.08 millimeters respectively. Once you have that done, then you have your valves correctly set and you're ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to get it finished up. I just thought it would be a good little video since there are none on setting your valve lash excuse me and then the next thing that I will probably tackle will be the cam chain when that will happen I'm not sure uh, but that will probably be the next thing that I do and then I will do the carburetor synchronizing so that we can get these carburetors dialed in and that is it this is your friendly neighborhood Zippo. If you found this helpful, please do smash that like button. Think about subscribing. And check out my other videos on other small engines. A Zippo later. I'm out of here. Alright gang, just finished adjusting the valves. Um, this bike just loves to start. And it starts right away. So, I'm going to see if it's going to kick start. And it's cold. I've not started it yet since doing the valve adjustment. So, hang on. Let's see what it does. And it does it with no choke. No choke. Contact. Sorry, sounds much better. Only had two valves out of adjustment. Um, exhaust valve on two and three, which wasn't bad. And it's not a difficult job to do. You, know, you take your gas tank off, that's the hardest part. And you pop these caps off. Pop the cap off. But now some of you are going to balk because I've got the windscreen and the fairing on. Um, with my neck, this thing is a godsend. I am so glad the bike has it. My CB350 twin that I had also had the fairing, but back then I didn't have my neck problem, so I never put it on. But I'm really glad that Bill got this for this one. So the trunk, why is the trunk back on there? Well, it's really handy to be able to put your stuff in there when I travel, I travel with my Diet Coke no matter where I go. And I've even found a spot since I put the fairing on. Because I've got to have it. If I turn it just like that. It will sit down in there. And it will not budge. And it won't even fizz up. This thing rides so smooth. Should ride just a little bit smoother now or have a little bit more power since I had those two valves out of adjustment. But overall, I mean, you figure eight valves, two out of four were, or two out of eight were out just, uh, just a little bit. Um, just a little too tight. So once the engine warmed up, I would end up losing just a little bit of power. Uh, but anyway, that's done. 
I am going to go for a ride. I just ordered some parts and I'm going to go get the parts which will fit in my little trunk and I'm also going to stop and get this paint color matched. It's not an identical match to the tank but it's close enough. It's a heck of a lot closer than black so I'm just going to get a little bit of that so I can paint the trunk. Um, the you guys might think that the the bill is monopolizing my time. It's not. Um, other jobs are getting done. Just had a push mower dropped off yesterday that was inadvertently ran over, <laughs> and there's a front wheel drive push mower broke the wheel off. But anyway, that's a story for another time. Uh, the owner wants me to just go ahead and order two new drive wheels which I should be able to take care of and it bent the drive axle a little bit and I'll see if I can't straighten it out. Shouldn't have a problem doing that. Alright, spent the day at uh, Barb's yesterday. Barb Turner, Bill Turner's uh, wife's widow and made her a whole bunch of room in the garage for her to get her car in and out. You guys might have remembered from that video that I posted if you watched it, the um, that was right in front of the car where the car would be parked and then there was a little yellow golf ball where Barb could pull in and just touch that golf ball and be able to put the garage door down well now she can pull all the way up to the washer and dryer if she wants to all that stuff has been moved just relocated to make it easier on her and on me for when I start sorting through everything which is going to come up uh, probably after August 11th so there we go I'm gonna go for a ride go pick up some parts beautiful day out absolutely gorgeous day out perfect day for riding let's get her done I will see you guys on the next one I hope the valve adjustment video uh, was helpful and you guys can send your condolences to my old friend the bun coffee maker in the comment section and please you know I like it when you guys hit that like button because it helps me out so please hit the like button if you're not subscribed please do subscribe look for more videos coming up on the bill uh, different things to adjust I have two manuals I have a climber and I have a Hanes my Hanes is over here oops Got the Haynes manual and actually the climber manual uh, has better illustrations and better here I'll give you an example here's what it showed for adjusting the valves physical pictures but where the valve adjustment is there is no illustrations on actually setting <laughs> the valves until you finally get over to here right there so this book does much, much better. All the illustrations are crystal clear and they're in line with the instructions so you're not having to chase photos to find the photos that you need. Anyway, that's good enough. This is it, Friendly Neighborhood Zippo. Please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I will see you guys on the next one later. I'm out of here.